whole world is now inhabited by 8 billion people. What this means for us is both huge opportunity, but also considerable challenges. To discuss it further, we spoke with the United Nations Population Fund Executive Director, Natalia Kanem, and the European Commission Vice President for Democracy and Demography, Dubravka Schwitza. The United Nations Population Fund has just uh, published the State of the World Population Report. India overtook China as the country with the largest population. It will keep growing very fast. I would like to ask uh, Madam Executive Director, which other um, findings would you like to highlight? There are two things that I'll say. One is that world population is reordering itself. We're living in a period where there's so much diversity. Some countries have a mean age of 50, others a mean age of 15. But my real point is that everywhere, there seem to be these alarm bells going off. World population, too big, too small. Women will make their own decisions and we should support them in the fertility that they wish to have. Uh, Madam Vice President, the European Union has only 6% of the world population and faces a declining trend which will have huge impact in terms of financing, welfare and pension system. Um, considering the way uh, as the French population is so angrily reacting to reforms in these fields, what are the solutions? There are different ways how to, uh, how, how to find solutions, as you said. First one, uh, to use our cohesion policy in the best possible way in order to create environment for families to thrive. Then I have to mention artificial intelligence and robotics, which is very important and can sometimes replace humans, but I don't say that this is the only solution. And the third one is uh, managing legal migrations. How can we integrate migrants in a way that is uh, positive for them and for our societies? I think that solidarity is of utmost importance and we have to uh, push on it. And I think that Europe is based on solidarity. So we have to uh, work do more on this, prepare them to integrate better when they can meet uh, learning language or different skills, reskilling, upskilling. You know that we are now in the European year of skills. And for us, uh, due to our twin transitions, digital and green, there are new jobs and it's very important to have skilled people for new jobs, for new green jobs. So this is something which uh, should be done in advance before they come to our member states. How can we explain this anxiety about the fact that we are now 8 billion? The population dynamics of the moment is a world of great movement. And when we look at the dynamics of what creates that movement, we see that there's one axis of conflict and people feeling that in their microcosm, it's unsafe for me. Now, uh, climate is another push for people to leave where they are and to seek a better life elsewhere. And so we need to look for climate solutions and we also need to put peace at the center. The other uh, piece of it is that this is the first time in human history when there's so much divergence. In uh, fact, two thirds of us live in places where population will decline looking towards the year 2050 but there's still one third of us in places where population is growing very rapidly. There are a lot of women in developing country settings who still cannot get contraception. European women face obviously different uh, challenges, but there's still some discrimination in terms of access to the job market, in terms of wages. They also make up for, I would say, 90% of the workforce for the health and social care. So when we talk about women empowerment and respecting their rights, what is missing? Gender issue is a, is a big issue uh, in European Union and we have to deal with it. Eight million European women don't work at all. Although they have their careers, they have their CVs, but they can't work because they cannot afford either kindergarten or nursery home for their, either for their parent or for their kid. So we lack 8 million European women in our labor market because of this. So we have to take care about infrastructure. We have to take care about this profession of caregiver, which is, uh, I must say, should be better respected, should be better paid because this profession is undervaluated and we have to take care about this. 
but I would say that maybe other groups also uh, are still overlooked. I would say maybe people with disability uh, and uh, people with other issues, uh, and even among elderly people that want to still be active yes. and work, they find it hard to find a job or to still be able to contribute. There has to be also a mindset change. Exactly, and that is the point about the eight billion and the infinite possibilities. If we ask the right questions, your imagination takes you to solutions that are workable. And putting people's desires, what they want at the center, has to be part of this equation. I also feel that it's a time of great uh, change in technology. It's a time of great possibility to be able to use new methodologies that we have to invent. As you said, how can an older person who can actively contribute be uh, in a situation that structures for their talents and their capacities. But most of all, I think it's uh, really important to look at the young generation's desire to put the planet, to connect all those dots across the sustainable development goals, planet and future. So this means let us plan more intelligently and ask better questions. So my last question, is would this vision be also a solution for the socially and economically depressed regions in Europe where we see you know there's a lot of dynamics in, in the urban areas but a lot of rural areas in many European Union countries are getting very depressed in all sorts of, of, of ways. This is something which our President von der Leyen wanted to, ins uh, wanted to have in the treaties intergenerational solidarity because we think it is important without that uh, our, our societies won't be fair won't be uh, we won't be equal when we talk about uh, rural versus urban this is a big issue 80 percent of europe geographically is covered by rural areas and only one third of our population live there which means there is a huge potential in villages in the countryside in uh, rural areas they're trying to uh, trying uh, to invest to cover uh, rural areas with 5g with broadband internet without broadband internet you can't imagine uh, uh, future jobs and this is uh, this is the reason why digital skills are very important because nowadays you can uh, also when you mention older people they have to be uh, skillful enough so we are promoting lifelong learning in order to make older people capable of uh, coping with the new technologies and with new styles of life. Madam Vice President, Madam Executive Director, thank you very much for helping us understand better our world with 8 billion people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.